Oh, the lights went down in Elizabeth City And the sun shined on Edenton Bay Oh, the fans didn't want to be there, yeah In their city Best coverage of high school and college athletics in Northeast North Carolina begins now. This is NENC Sports Radio Show on WRVS 89.9. Northeastern North Carolina's place for sports talk back with you. Owen Hassel, sports editor for the Daily Advance newspaper in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Malcolm Shields, Advance sports writer in the studio as well. Got an old friend, Malcolm, joining us. Uh, Curry Tuck football coach, also indoor track coach now. John Wheeler, uh, coach, how's your new team? Uh, we're excited. We got some good numbers out there. Great young men and women out there working hard in our first meets this weekend. So we're looking forward to it. Obviously, the big topic is this past Friday, mm-hmm. Edenton Northeastern Aces getting that victory, thirty-five twenty-one. Talk plenty about that in just a moment. But first. For more on Northeastern North Carolina sports, follow us on Twitter. Also use the hashtag NENC Sports to keep the discussion rolling. You can follow us at NENC Sports. Then for me, I'm at Owen OBX. Malcolm? I'm at Malcolm underscore Shields. Coach Wheeler? At Curry Tuck SP. And there's more ways to stay involved with sports in Northeastern North Carolina in the form of a blog. Go to NENCSports.wordpress.com. And Malcolm, more than a thousand views yeah. on the blog for that Edenton Northeastern video. Less than five days. I mean, it was really, 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 you know, picking up those views. We get those four digits. That's that's big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very big. Uh, as for tidbits like that, big tidbit. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Not always in the daily advance. I can't put a video on yeah. print. Uh, plus interview and video from various Northeastern North Carolina games. We'll be back with more. N-E-N-C Sports. You can listen to Owen and Malcolm on YouTube. Hear your favorite shows and segments on demand with the WRVS 89.9 YouTube channel. Discover graduate education at Elizabeth City State University. ECSU currently offers four graduate degree programs. Elementary education, biological sciences, school administration, and mathematics. To learn more, contact the Office of Graduate Education at 252-335-3947 or online at ecsu.edu. Sportsmanship, it means a lot of things. It means showing respect for the opposing team. And being a good host for our visitors. It's about modeling good behavior and not getting caught up in the emotion of the moment. It's about winning with humility. Losing with dignity. It is about making my high school games. It's a good memory that I can enjoy for years to come. Mr. Official. Mom. Dad. Son. Daughter. Coach. Are we in this together? Sportsmanship. Sportsmanship. Together, together we, we make, make the right call. call. This message has been brought to you by the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. This is Edenton coach Paul Hoggard, and you're listening to NENC Sports Radio Show on WRBS 89.9. It was a 30 minute journey to the city by Edenton that did the trick and again kept Northeastern from reaching a state championship. 35 21 aces, Edenton on to the 2A East Regional Final. Malcolm, where do you start? Eden played the perfect game. I mean, defensively, they they slowed down Northeastern's offense that, that you know, that was opportunistic against them in the first matchup back in October, who had been pretty much steamrolling since that matchup into that game outside of the Hereford County game. And defensively, Edenton played the game that I thought they were going to play the first time. I mean, they were completely solid. They got off the field and... You know they kept pressure on J.R. Walker and or Demar Sutton. It was it was it was it was what, however they drew it up. That's how they wanted to go. How how they wanted to play out, and you know they're moving on. Right. Defensively, like you said, for Edenton was big, but Edenton's offense in the second half was its best defense. Yes, in many ways, even when the Aces did not score, mm-hmm. just first down after first down, chunks of time coming off that clock. It felt like Northeastern only had the ball like three possessions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's probably not too far off. And, and to come out of the halftime locker room, get that that second half kickoff, and 
run off at least six minutes and didn't get a touchdown, go 28-7. I mean, just, just you know, masterful game plan by Coach Harger. Yeah, I was I was making the comparison to Villanova Georgetown eighty five national championship where Villanova supposedly played the perfect game mm-hmm. uh, to beat Georgetown. I don't know if the disparity in talent was quite this large, mm-hmm. but it, it had that that sense, yeah. that sensation that Edenton was going to have to play near perfect to get the victory, and it did. Mm-hmm. I think five turnovers the first game by Edenton. It was, it was a lot. Yeah, round about that. <laughs> round, round about three to five turnovers, let's mm-hmm. say. This game, not one. Mm-hmm. Not a one. This yeah. might be the first time all year. Yeah. Great timing. Yes. <laughs> and then, then when they did drop the ball, they, they you know, they got the fortuitous bounce and they recovered it. So Yes, yes. Somebody looking over the aces yes. on at least two different plays where I saw if Northeastern had picked up either one of those fumbles. Mm-hmm. Blood in the water. Going to strike. This could be a whole different game in a hurry because that's how Northeastern works. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so you think you're lonely, but well, my friend Northeastern is too. After another stellar year, ten plus win season again, fourth straight Northeastern Coastal Conference title, either shared or outright, a third round playoff appearance. Have at least been that far, Malcolm. The last five seasons, uh, two outstanding sophomores with ACC offers. Uh, J.R. Walker on water, and Travion so fresh, water so clean. I- I'm going to put throw this out there to you, Malcolm, and Coach Wheeler. Will Northeastern get to a state championship one or both of these upcoming seasons? Will it happen? You got to think with having fresh water and Walker coming back, that the opportunity is going to be there. But this year, in terms of way how the brackets broke out, this is probably – their best chance. Um, you get the number one seed. Everything's going to come through Elizabeth City and for Edenton to trip you up. That's that's pretty tough. But I think with the talent that they do have coming back at the skill position, they'll have an opportunity. Coach, I mean it's it's Northeastern. They they don't rebuild. They reload. So every year they're going to have that opportunity. Coach Moore and that staff is going to coach them hard, and those kids have been working hard too. So I was uh, I was actually real pleased to see that on Twitter today that. Uh, he had received those offers from NC State and Duke and, and ECU. And then my understanding that Freshwater is right in there in the same boat. So, um, you know, kudos to those guys and, and also to those individuals helping them out and getting that kind of exposure. We've been saying it for years and years and years that there's a lot of athletic talent here in Northeastern North Carolina. And it's, it's not just Northeastern. You know, there's, there's a lot of teams in this area that um, could be primed to win the state championship. And, you know, Edenton, is going to be loaded again next year. So, you know, there's there's a lot of programs next year that I'm pretty sure um, are already out of the playoffs and, and going to go ahead and start getting ready for for possible run next year, and including the Eagles. It just like you said, Malcolm, this, this bracket just seems so perfect for the Eagles, though. And I even did a shamal now a few weeks ago, like, yeah, if you don't do it now. Yeah. I mean, really, I, I I even told Coach Antonio Moore this that you the e, the only way you could have had it easier is if you're in the one A East and playing Plymouth. It that's about you wouldn't that would have been easier. That's it. Right. Otherwise, all the bigger two A schools were in the two double A bracket. It just it just looked mighty nice. Yeah, the road went through Elizabeth City, and now it goes to Tabor City, mm-hmm. a different city. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Edenton at South Columbus uh, next Friday for the 2A uh, East Championship. And Edenton now fighting for what would be their first state title since 1969 if, if the Aces can do it. The state championship being played at, uh, I want to say Grove Stadium. It's not Grove Stadium it's more, anymore. It's BB&T Field mm-hmm. uh, at Wake Forest uh, the following Saturday. So Edenton's still in this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people did not see this coming. The only thing that you could hang your hat on was the fact that again the Edenton turnovers gave Northeastern a lot of was a lot of good fields mm-hmm. to make that score forty eight fourteen. And did you see Malcolm that, that maybe Northeastern was on their face a little bit when when Edenton took that lead, hoggered with the touchdown and went up that little doubt came out, a little concern. And you can see little snippets of it. I think early in the, in, in the first half when um, Northeastern tried to do the pass with Tyshawn Vaughn and. Northeastern um, Edenton blew that up. You can see the confidence building on, on the Edenton sideline. Um, it just seemed like those 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 moments, it went Edenton's way this time. And another thing you have to wonder about is, did Northeastern try to throw the football too much? 
Um, last week again, uh, in, the, in the second round, uh, Edenton had their struggles against the Kinston receiver. I think it was Denard Branch, who you know kind of carved them up in, in, in the secondary. So you kind of want to kind of wonder if that's what was Northeastern's kind of game plan in terms of just trying to force the ball down the field. Yeah, but I mentioned J.R. Walker and Travion Freshwater. Right. Nobody's got that talent on the field in this area. Mm-hmm. Those two guys. Nobody. Mm-hmm. You run them, yeah. and you run them some more, and then after that, you keep running them. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get you, you play of what you got. What what did it get you? What got you to the dance? Mm-hmm. It was those guys. It was Darius Walton, Malik Combs. These guys. run, mm-hmm. run, run. Even Antonio Moore admitted they needed to run more J.R. and Freshwater in the first half and didn't. Mm-hmm. So there it is right there. I, that, I think that does make a difference. You throw so many different backs at Edenton. They, they've got to prepare for a number of different players. And instead, DeMar Sutton started overshooting receivers, which he can, he's known to do. Uh, Khalil Blunt, I thought, made a great play to, to swat away a pass that would have been a short touchdown. Right now, so, And before that play, I think it was a big run by DeMar. Right. So – Northeastern was knocking, mm-hmm. and, and Edenton's defense was definitely a bend but don't break at that point, and a couple other drives was the same thing. But even then, J.R. Walker breaks free, touchdown, and Freshwater breaks free for a touchdown in the second half. Both those touchdowns took less than 20 seconds off the clock. That's how explosive Northeastern can be at any moment. Uh, it, it just went back to, once again, the option and running off clock, First down, first down. Luke Hogger had the game of his life. Yes, yes, he did. And, and Northeastern would be the first to admit, okay, well, let's see if Luke Hogger can beat us because they, they put their chips in that that would not happen. Well, Luke Hogger beat you. Yeah. He did. Yes, he did. Credit credit to the man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, again, a great game, though. That's Northeastern needing some football and how, it, and how it breaks down almost every year. Uh, just tough when it's a playoff game. I know that yeah. burns a little bit more. Uh, if you're a fan of the Eagles, uh, other playoff matchups last Friday, Hertford County, pretty good fight against East Duplin, uh, but lost that one late. Uh, that's a two double A bracket. And then Plymouth top North Edge come in one A. Vikings will get South side for the chance to again say again, because mm-hmm. Plymouth seems to get there every year and coach Robert Cody uh, reach a state title game and defend their crown. Like we said earlier in the show, uh, Coach Wheeler's doing some work for the indoor track team. I believe your first meet is this weekend in Virginia. That's right. We're going to head on up to Christian Newport University and uh, take part in the CNU Winter Frolic. Winter Frolic. What a name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you don't hear too many football jamborees called Frolics, I can tell you that. Okay. That's that a little different for me. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got how many on the team? Uh, right now, we've got 49. 49, very good number. And obviously, it's just as much for work for the outdoor season as anything else. Uh, you've got throwers, runner. I mean, what do you have more of? Uh, to be honest with you, right now, we've we've definitely got more long-distance uh, runners than anything. It's, uh, it's definitely a whole lot different than football. It's... Um, it's a completely different mindset. There's 14 events that we participate in for, for men and women. So it's it's definitely a different type of practice set up. It's a different type of pace. It is an indoor sport, but we have to practice outside. Luckily, we have a rubber track. I know a lot of our, our local schools don't have that luxury. But, um, you know, it's, it's still very difficult to simulate because, you know, a a regulation track is 400 meters. So when we go out and we go to these indoor facilities, they're 200 meter tracks. So, you know, again, it's, it's just a completely different beast. And, and we're trying to get, trying to get those times and those distances and, and jumps to qualify for states, which will be in February. Well, going back to football, and uh, Hereford County football coach Terrence Saxby was with us last week, Malcolm. Uh, we went, do an over-under experiment uh, for Edenton Northeastern as far as keys to the game, what we thought would be different keys. Uh, I will say I only perform well in one aspect, and that would be you asked me who would be the big play receiver for Edenton. I said Mr. James Cofield. He, of course, made the 33-yard touchdown cast, pass, catch, pass, same thing. Uh, Edenton's lone completion of the night. <laughs> We also said 50 passing yards over under. Coach Saxby said yes with one big play. So he's kind of right because yep. that was one big play, yep. but it wasn't 50 yards or over. 
I said yes because the Eagles, they tend to give up that one or two big passing plays. It was a big pass play still. It just yes. wasn't <laughs> 50 over yards. You had... I think right. I had under. Okay. I think I may have. So I, I think some of it's a wash because yeah. their completed pass was a touchdown pass. Yeah. Uh, for the first time, Eaton completed a touchdown pass since 1997. <laughs> I don't know if it's been that long. They run people. They run the ball a lot. Yes. Okay. Uh, Northeastern throws two picks. We said, I ah, probably would be right at two. Mm-hmm. Saxby had under. Saxby was right. The one interception. He said it would be in a situation where it wouldn't really help Edenton. He was right because Edenton didn't need the help. It was near the end of the game. Yep. Yep. Khalil Blunt making the pick with little to no time left. Edenton had the, pretty well had the game in hand at that point. Kimon Bailey, 100 yards rushing. I said under, mm-hmm. but like 85, 90. Uh, Saxby said under. Uh, you had over. A little bit over. A little bit over. Maybe like one, 105, 110. But the junior had 152. Yeah. Uh, even though Hoggard had the probably the little bit better night, mm-hmm. if I think mm-hmm. right. Or they might have been even. They they were close. I think I had I think Hoggard was around about 140. So. Right. And uh, with Kimon Bailey 152 flirting with perhaps the area's all time best mark of 3100 plus yards by someone Coach Wheeler very familiar with. Now we can get him back in to this conversation. He has to know who this person is. I have a pretty good guess. Okay. <laughs> Charles Nichols. That's great kid. Great kid. Love me. Love me some Chuck. There you go. I wanted, I just uh, want to throw a name. I want to throw another random name out first, but go ahead. You, you know who it is. Uh, Marquise. Marquise Grizzle. Marquise Grizzle. And what he did was 3,100 yards, but not in 14 games. Was it 12? Either twelve or thirteen. It was it was thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. We went we went three deep that year. And he had one game where he ran for eight hundred and twenty five yards, Malcolm. <laughs> Unbelievable. He just kept oh going. My gosh. It was there we go. Forrest Gump where they said, Go, go, stop. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and he just kept running into the and there wasn't even a tunnel, so he, he just started running into the woods back there in Barco. Yeah, we, we had to go down to the convenience store and tell him to come on back. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> There was one game against Camden where I think he had like six touchdowns. And now I will say this: there were multiple games where we pulled him in the second half. Okay. You know we we um we play him in the first series in the third quarter and and then go ahead and take him out and let some of our, our other guys get an opportunity. Um, this is something we're not going to risk. You know, some simple you know simple injury or something like that in the second half. Um, plus, it, it helped us develop depth. Uh, at the running back position. So that really helped us out a lot. And, you know, he, he never complained. He never, you know, griped or demanded the ball. He he just did as we asked him to do. And, and that was – it was a fun season, you know, just to, for everybody to be involved. And the offensive line took pride in it too. You know, they had goals set every week that we're going to get him this many rushing yards and things like that. And, you know, I, I see I see a lot of that when I watch the stat line for, for Bailey is – um. You know, a lot of people want to talk about Bailey, but I, I think that offensive line deserves every bit of that kind of credit that he's getting. I mean, you don't you don't put up that many yards unless somebody's out there blocking their tails off. And the other thing about Edenton is there's wideouts doing absolutely phenomenal job of uh, engaging a block, driving their feet, putting a DB on skates, and and just opening up those run lanes. So, you know that. That that whole entire offensive unit deserves a lot of credit for those rushing stats that Bailey's putting up this year. Uh, Bailey's about 262 yards, I think. Something mm-hmm. about that away from that 3,000. Possible he gets it this Friday. Uh, even if he doesn't, if Edenton wins, you would like to think he would crack it in the mm-hmm. state championship. But Coach, what what do you see between Keemon Bailey and Marquise Grizzle? What are their differences? What are their styles? They will hit the gap with everything they got and everything in the tank, and those legs are churning. You know, they're, they're going to hit it going full speed, 100 miles an hour, and they're going to make sure that you're in perfect position to stop them. Um, both of them are pretty much downhill runners for the most part. Uh, Kimon Bailey is going to rush 
You know, that side, that loves, he loves that left side. Number 56 is going to pave the way for him. And um, yeah, he, he's going to run hard. He's going to run hard. The other thing is, is he's going to keep that head on the swivel because a lot of those offensive linemen, a lot of those wide receivers, and even his quarterback, number five, Hoggard, is going to get downfield and throw an extra block for him. So he's going to keep those those eyes on the swivel and and make sure that he's picking up every block all the way down, trying to find pay dirt. But uh, that's what I see a lot in, in Bailey in comparison with Grizzle was both of them just ran the ball so hard, and they knew exactly where they're going with the ball. They knew exactly how they wanted to get it, and then they knew that those guys, um, that cast was going to be there to set the block for them. So, uh, and I'm, records were meant to be broken. So I'm rooting for Bailey. Go for it, big guy. And I thought the biggest hit though Friday night was the one Luke Hoggard with the ball laid on J.R. Walker yeah. to run in for the touchdown. I I was fortunate enough to get a clip of that. Yes. I think people are still like yeah. favoriting and yeah. or liking and retweeting that like mm-hmm. four or five days later because it was just such a pop. Yeah. Uh, Hoggard saw it. He just he absorbed it. Mm-hmm. Walker did not wrap up. Mm-hmm. He thought, I can just give him a good old pop. He'll go out of bounds. Hoggard's a good-sized kid. Yes, he is. He's not just going to go out of bounds. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> As it showed there, I mean, he he absorbed it like nobody's business and just kept on rolling like a big old a big old train. Yes. The Hogger train chugging Hogger into train. the end zone. Yep. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a huge momentum shift. It just I, – I really thought it just – it summarized the game. Mm-hmm. Edenton – Giving Northeastern a few punches in the mouth and Northeastern making some recovery, but by then the aces were, were, were cruising. Mm-hmm. It, it was just a, again, a, a Luke Hoggard. I wouldn't have expected it. I wouldn't have expected it. Not that he's not a capable player. It's just you would have expected Keemon Bailey to need 200 plus yards. Right. I think that was some other things we talked about last week. And just an overall great team effort. Mm-hmm. And that's why Edenton's in the East Finals. And we've talked about Northeastern and the ridiculous numbers the Eagles have put out the last four, five, six, seven years, uh, 10 win seasons, all that kind of stuff. So that made me want to look back for Edenton since 2011. That's when things really started to change to, to get the program back to some of those glory years. It was uh, Wes Matera's second year as head coach. Uh, since 2011, Edenton. Is a combined sixty and seventeen. Have won or shared four conference championships, and that's between three head coaches. So you've got some transition there on top of it. Mm-hmm. And I realize Matera's back as an assistant with Hogger, and that kind of eases some of that. But still, three different head coaches in that time. Uh, Twelve and two record this year. That's the most wins since two thousand four. So there's still plenty to play for. But two thousand. I mean, that's. Six years, 60 and 17. That's an average of 10 wins a season. We, we talk a lot about Northeastern, but mm-hmm. if there's a team that rivals them, it's not just because they they don't hate each other, but they, it's because they play healthy, each other hard. Healthy disdain. They're right there. Healthy <laughs> disdain. Very nice. I mean, it's, it's now Curry Tuck in first flight. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that healthy, Coach? Coach is there? I'm I'm here. <laughs> I really gave him a loaded it, 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 question. <laughs> it's it's a great rivalry, there and, and I and I love rivalry games, and you know, but when <clears throat> when when we sit here and we talk about Northeastern Edenton, a lot of people, a lot of people I talked to, kept wanting to go back to the first matchup, the first matchup. Well, did you see what Northeastern did? Did you see what mm-hmm. Edenton did? We, we've said this before on this show that when you have a rivalry game, everything's out the window. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your record is. It doesn't matter what your stats are. It doesn't matter anything. That that game can get crazy and things can go completely the opposite direction of what they're supposed to. I mean, let's, let, let's call a spade a spade. When you get to the stadium, if you had no clue who Northeastern was, you had no clue who Edenton was, and you're sitting in the stands and you're looking at this team versus that team in the warm-ups, Northeastern passes that look test hands down, without a doubt. Yeah. But when you see both teams play, you realize that there's a completely different dynamic to both teams. You know, Northeastern's going to 
going to sling it. They got incredible team speed. Edenton is just smash mouth. We're going to run the football, and you're going to like it. So, you know, when it comes to a rivalry, and especially against a team like Edenton that loves to control the clock, they love to control the clock. They love to maintain ball control on the ground, and they're good at it. They're not fancy. They're pretty vanilla on offense, but what they do is they do it so well that it's hard to stop. It's just really hard to stop. It's just like Coach Boone and remember the Titans. We got six plays, and just like Novocaine, give it time, you know, and that, that's what Edenton does. And it's frustrating as a defensive guy. It's frustrating, you know, as, as, a, as a playoff team that they've seen this. And, and I know it's frustrating in Northeastern, but it's tough. And you, you've got to force turnovers. And that's something that Edenton did a good job of, is they didn't turn that ball over. And really, that's something that's been tough for Edenton all year, mm-hmm. the turnovers. And, and to have a turnover-free game, they definitely had to have that, or at the very most, just one turnover. Mm-hmm. But it had to be at a certain time frame that it – wouldn't benefit Northeastern too much. They threw that out of the water by not turning it over at all. Uh, I, I was reminded of, I don't know why it came in my head, of uh, of uh, Friday Night Lights, the movie. And when Permian's in the championship and the team they're playing is trying to run the clock and you see the guy with the lollipop in his mouth and he sees, you see him moving his arm like, move that clock, move that clock. Run that that's, clock. That's what it, I felt like the Eden's and coaches were doing <laughs> with each first down because – like you said, the smash mouth that was Luke for three yards, uh, Kimon for four yards, uh, uh, Majante Stanley for three or four yards on the outside. I mean, it was three or four, three or four. There was never necessarily a big, like, 20-yard gain. Mm-hmm. There really wasn't. There was a couple, like, 10, 11 yards, but that's yeah, how that's, Edenton that's did some, it. That, that, that's some old Sun Tzu, the art of war right there. We're not going to kill, kill you with one big stab. We're going to kill you with a 1,000 paper cuts, mm-hmm. you know? Because it, it is, it's, you get two, you get three, you get four, you get three. I mean, as a defensive guy, you're like, yeah, okay, you know, it's only a gain of three, it's only a gain of two, it's only a gain of four. But you put all those things together, and it's like, holy cow, you know, we're, and we're, we're not doing anything against it. You know, they're doing exactly what they want to do. Um, I was talking, listening to a analyst the other day, and and they were talking about, you know, some of the the best programs in college football in the NFL, and that's exactly what they do. They don't kill you with the big with the big strikes. They don't kill you with the seventy yard touchdown runs. They kill you with clock management, ball control, and they're going to make sure that you are off the field with your offense, and you're not going to have an opportunity to score. You know, and that's it, it, it. Again, it's frustrating from a defensive coordinator perspective when you know exactly what they're going to run. And you dial something up, and they're still going to execute it. And they get three, and they get four, and they get three again. And so, you know, that's what Edenson's done a phenomenal job of this season. And hopefully they take that same mentality to South Columbus. Uh, so we compared our over-under, see, over-unders to see where Edenson succeeded and, of course, prevailed against Northeastern. We missed this one, though. Okay. Over-under Edenson fans compared to Northeastern fans at the game. I'm going to say over for the Edenton fans. <laughs> because Northeastern crowds, they've really become wine and cheese. They really have. I mean, first two rounds, barely half full on the home side. Bam wasn't even around for the second round. And I know it was the day after Thanksgiving, but Southwest Onslow brought its band. Hmm. They made the trip. They brought the band. If I remember correctly, did they, Edenton fans have like some glow sticks or something or like flashlights? Right before the game of... Our photographer got a shot of it, and it looked like a lot of students mostly were holding their cell phones up and using the flashes on their cell phones ah. to create that effect. Wow. I guess they realized they couldn't have the big fireworks show like right. you do in right. Eden's and right. the huge fireworks show, which is pretty spectacular. Yeah. So let's do something like that. They had the smoke. Yes, they did. Did have the smoke. Yeah, they had the little strobe lights, the blue and the blue and yellow. They did. They did as much as they could do on yeah. someone else's field. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it was the the fans. I mean, people were leaving after the third quarter for Northeastern. The game was still in question. Mm-hmm. It was the twenty eight fourteen at that point. Mm-hmm. The game was not over, especially after Freshwater just broken one. I mean, that was exactly what they needed to stay around. They needed a quick strike, and they got it. I still saw fans leaving. Just like, why? It was really that baffled me right there because it was still a good game regardless. Mm-hmm. You, I'd want to stay to the end if I was just a fan, mm-hmm. no matter what side I was on. But Edenton fans brought the funk. 
Yeah. Ainsen fans were there. They they showed up. And I wondered a little bit because of the first meeting, would they show up like they did the first meeting? They did and then some. Mm-hmm. Ainsen certainly loves its team. And, uh, even more so now in the Eastern Finals. Did you see this note, Malcolm? What's that? Northeastern fans are saying the Eagles won last Friday. Okay. They are citing the popular vote of total points in the two meetings. Oh. In that case, it's 69-49 Northeastern. <laughs> but you know what, guys? This is why we have the Eden Toriel College. All right, that's the news, and I am out of here. Wow. <laughs> that's a good high note. i got to walk out right now. <laughs> <laughs> but as Randy Jones says, we'll take a pause for the calls. WRVS 899 provides training for all students and volunteers interested in radio broadcasting. But without your donations, this radio station will go silent. Let's make a sound today. Now is a great time to give back to public radio. Make a tax-deductible donation by calling 252-335-3985 or online at www.ecsu.edu slash WRVS. Just give me the cheese, I'll make a smoke it, y'all. Smoke it, y'all. Okay, so I'm still here. <laughs> Malcolm Shields is still here. Coach John Wheeler's still here. Was that Sean Paul? Very much Sean Paul. Yes. Wow. Okay. You feeling better now? I am, actually. I haven't heard that song in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing back the classics. Wait, that can't be a classic. That's like only 10 or 12 years well, old. I, I figure Malcolm brought that from South Florida. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, all right. Well, let's burn ourselves in Shamol now. Shamol. Shamol. Get on me. All right. Selfies. We even have sticks for them these days. But what's the deal with the tongue sticking out? I mean, are you showing off your tonsils or lack of tonsils? Uh, may- maybe a selfie means speaking in tongues. You see uh, girls and everybody, they got the tongues out. Taking photos. All I know is I'm looking for a crying Jordan face to put on someone with their tongue sticking out. And I'm going to have the tongue sticking through the crying Jordan. Come on now. Malcolm, who'd you talk to this week? Well, um, this week I got the chance to catch up with the uh, Eden quarterback, uh, Luke Hoggard, um, after the, you know, big game that he had against, uh, Northeastern last week, kind of talked about, you know, getting back to the, uh, East final and, um, you know, just the comparison between, uh, the football East final and baseball. Have you kind of thought about that you've been on an East final baseball team and now you're going back for football? Uh, actually after the Northeastern game, a lot of the guys from the baseball team were there mm-hmm. and uh, the first thing they said to me was, wow, what a coincidence. We played them in the fourth round mm-hmm. in baseball and now we're playing them in the fourth round for football. So yeah, it's pretty neat to be go back to back to the Eastern quarterfinals. Hopefully we'll break through this time. All right. I think I've seen a lot of times Matt's been out there. Who's been the other guys who've been out there from, from the baseball team? Um, the Matt, um, Nugget, Nathaniel Stallings, mm-hmm. uh, Jacob Byron, Jaden, Ben, really all the guys that came out and supported us. Mm-hmm. And what did it mean for you this year to have those guys come out and, you know, support you? Um, it means a lot because I don't think Nugget and JV and Matt have missed a game all year. Mm-hmm. They've gone everywhere we've gone, rain, sleet, snow. Mm-hmm. So it means a lot just to see them care about it and give us their full support. And it's really touching and shows how much of a family we really are. All right, I guess, can you kind of compare the two teams? Uh, to in, term, in terms of baseball and football, like is there cer- certain similarities that the teams have in terms of like traits, um, or personality? Yeah, I guess. Um, I'd say that the work ethic between both teams has been pushed strongly between the coaching staff. Uh, the pride of both teams is really big. Uh, we had off year this year, and nobody just got up beat and came back to it. And uh, baseball, we just kept pursuing and pursuing the same way we are this year. So yeah, I'd say um, I'd say it's a whole athletic thing here at Edenton. Everybody wants to dream to be the best and work for it too. Alrighty, do you do? You, I guess being on a team that kind of feels short, do you feel like you've been a little bit more vocal about living in the moment and taking advantage of a Friday night? Um, yeah, I, I do. Okay. Actually, uh. Because we were so close in baseball that um, 
and here we stand again really close and I mean it's just stressing that anything can happen um so we're here now we might as well go get it mm -hmm. for us seniors it's our last chance mm -hmm. so it's, you better live in the moment because it's going to be gone just like that. Mm -hmm. And what do you think overall just the success of, you know, not only baseball and, and football now, but other sports does it say about the athletic program here? Uh, it says that we've came a long ways and that we're not done working. Um, it says that everybody's, like I said earlier, everybody's pursuing to be the best and actually working for it. It says a lot about every team's work ethic. It says a lot about the coaches, the time that they put in, the time that the players put in. And, uh, the administration and just the whole school community, I guess, because mm -hmm. it, it does take everybody to be successful. All right, I guess looking forward to Friday night. What do you think is going to be a successful? I mean, important for you guys to be successful on offense. Um, to as play hard as we did and be as mentally focused as we were. Mm -hmm. Um, if we can, if we can be as mentally focused as we were, I think we kind of put the whole two together. We we played hard in some games and we were really mentally focused and kind of executed well, and then Friday we kind of put them together. I think to have a chance, we got to do it again. There's just something about you, NENC Universe, <laughs> that keeps us coming back. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I'm sorry. I just come up you with go, these things. You go, you go from Sean Paul to that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that, my friend, is level 42, and that is an 80s classic. <laughs> oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, make I, that clear. I, I, I'll admit, I, 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 can, I can sing it right there with you. It's just, it, it caught me off guard. You go from Sean Paul to level 42. I mean, just, uh, okay. Just a different level, Coach. Different level. I love it. The, the mix is on point tonight. Oh, Twitter shouts. Your tweets go here. Twitter shouts. Eric Rose. He's at E Rose MPH. Tweets out Edenton Aces at South Columbus Friday night. Not looking for much passing in this one. Duh. Yeah. Over under five passes. <laughs> under. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. South Columbus, a wing D. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, team and and Edenton obviously a shotgun team. I mean you know, a triple option <laughs> team so yeah uh, we encourage all of you to tweet about NENC sports and yours might get put on the air just post your thoughts or questions we'll try to answer them use the hashtag NENC sports now we got our predictions NENC picks of the week two games eastern finals of course it's, it's almost January and we have not in the championship yeah. series yet. That's Hurricane Matthew, of course, pushed things ahead. One thing in the uh, State High School Athletic Association meetings was now only counting, I believe, 20 games you could count for basketball, basketball. playoffs, mm -hmm. for, for playoff selections and seating because of Hurricane pushing back football, which pushes into basketball. It, it's a mess. That's that's tough for the Coastal 10 teams, for Pacoumas. Oh, game. yeah, because you have 85 conference games yeah. from those teams. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody asked me today, why is Pasqua tanking Camden's schedule for, for a Saturday? I'm like, when else can Camden play it? Just about. It, after you play Curry Tuck twice and you play Pasqua Tank once or twice, that's your season because the rest of it is conference games. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the teams in that league will say, have I told you how much I don't want to be in this conference? <laughs> I'm not naming names, just a number of coaches. Yes, I understand. Just just hang with it next year, Albemarle Conference, whole different setup. Okay, game predictions now. South side at Plymouth. I thought that there was one team that could take out Plymouth. It would have been North Edgecombe. Hung in tight with the Vikings, but Plymouth won. So that being said, these teams played last year. I've got to go with the Vikings to get back to the state championship. Can't go against uh, Coach Cody. I'm going with the Vikings. Coach, it's your turn. I, you, you can't go against Coach Cody. Not with, the, not with the resume he's put together down there in Plymouth. you got to go with the Vikings. That's another guy that will say, oh, shucks, people. I just run like five plays. <laughs> and we just do what we can with them. Uh, 
That's that's Cody. This is me. I'm Robert Cody. <laughs> but you know what? He has proved how coaches can overthink this game. Right. He has proven that time and time again, year in and year out. It's not a complicated game. You block, you tackle, you score, you have more points on the board than the other team. Simple. So yeah, he's been doing it a long time. I just talked to a coach that's out of Mars Hill that started uh, – playing when coach Cody started coaching um and so we got to talking about that a little bit and you know he's been doing that for a long long time the late 80s so if it ain't broke don't fix it he's got that mentality Vikings roll of course Edenton at South Columbus this is for the 2A uh, Eastern Final going down to Tabor City we're talking just a few minutes uh drive you're, you're already on the South Carolina line it's that mm-hmm. close so it's a long trip Edenton's already planned to have a nice little send-off for the team on Friday around noon downtown. There are going to be people up and down downtown Edenton cheering them on. I'm sure it's going to be a great scene. So if you don't think the town's hyped, they are. <laughs> they are incredibly hyped <laughs> and, and should be, uh, especially after knocking off your rival in the third round to get to this point. East Bladen was so close to beating South Columbus. Mm. And this game could have been in Edenton. How crazy would that yes. have been? Yes. <laughs> oh, my word. I mean, you might want to like move it from Ace of Stadium to – because no one else to play. So, you got to still play at Ace of Stadium. <laughs> maybe, maybe Chowan. Right, play the right. Chowan uh, uh, Cho- uh, Garrison uh, Stadium. The I right still coach. think Ace of Stadium is bigger. <laughs> you think so? Wow. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Ace of Stadium, keep it in Edenton. It needs to be there anyway. Just the point is a lot of people – and not a lot of space to park vehicles, but it didn't happen. Uh, South Columbus Trail scored with like maybe a minute or two left, went for two, got it, won the game by a point. South Columbus scoring a lot of points. Teams scoring a lot of points on South Columbus as well. Bertie hung in with South Columbus mm-hmm. in that first round. Uh, people are saying that South Columbus is playing better with each round. You like to think so this time of year. Uh, ooh, oh, my gosh, the running in this game. A lot of running. I mean, this, this is a game you're going to cover, Malcolm. This might only take two hours if there's so much <laughs> clock just running this game. I'm going to give it to the Aces. I really I think they, they – the key is putting that Northeastern game in the past some kind of quick. Mm-hmm. They're not even that, – that's so far behind you now in getting focused on this one. If there's anyone that's going to get them focused, it will be Coach Paul Hoggard. There's another coach that's going to say, oh, well, we just go play. We're doing well. I mean, mm-hmm. He's not going to tell you anything. He's not going to tell you a word. But I can guarantee you he's got everything put together, uh, game plans, film he's watched. He, he's got everything broken down already as we speak. And so does Wes Matera with the defense. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got it together. Wes is – He's already animated again. He's he's showing the old West Matera that we we've come to love <laughs> after last Friday. Look at the film that Malcolm put out there for for extra evidence. I mean, he's jumping all around. He's getting his he's getting his uh, exercise on <laughs> in that game. He's having a good old time. So, I got the Aces winning in like a one touchdown game. Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Aces like you had said before. South Columbus has been giving up a lot of points. I think. If again, if Eden can hit, can hit one pass play, I think that'll be the difference. Their defense has, you know, been you know pretty steady throughout the playoffs. It doesn't seem like uh, South Columbus has that threat in the passing game that Kinston, you know, presented. I'm gonna go with the uh, Aces, Coach. Never bet against the Northeastern Coastal Conference in the fourth round. I got to go with the Aces. You got Coach Hogg has been here. He's been in this position. Won a state championship. You got Wes Matera. He's been here. He's won a state championship as an assistant. They, they know how to get their guys focused. They've done a great job so far. Don't change anything you've been doing. It's been working. I mean, I, I'm wishing them the best. It just it goes right back to that it is preparation. Mm-hmm. And if there's any team right now that's prepared in the state playoffs, mm-hmm. it's going to be the Edenton Aces. Just, it, it just almost goes without saying. And, and, of course, talent is still talent. Right. And if they can go in that game, again, if they can have another game with no turnovers, mm-hmm. I really think Edenton's going to win this game. Yeah. Another game without a turnover. 
I know that sounds silly, like, a, well, I mean, we need to have less turnover, of course, but it just it's magnified with Edenton because of the season they've had where they've coughed up the ball a few times right. and been able to pick it up with their defense. You can't do that now. You can't do that now. Could it be? Could it be? And I, I've got a theory. Could it be the logo change? For Edenton. For Edenton? Well, it didn't work for him last year. Could it be? Six and six. Well, look at the Tennessee Titans. Change the logo, go to the Super Bowl. Tampa Buccaneers, change the logo, go to the Super Bowl. Me, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of that logo. I understand why it's there. They're they're trying to make sure people know Aces is not for cards. Yeah, it was for military. Right. You used to have a Navy base. Uh, so I understand why that part was needed. I still like the big E on the helmets. It's easy to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of the guys still wear shirts with the E on it. I mean, they, they consider themselves Eden's in high school as much as John A. Holmes, even though the school's name is John A. Holmes. Uh, I think the aces on the jersey is good, mm-hmm. but maybe the E on the helmet. See, I saw the um, – I was actually announcing the Super Bowls for the youth leagues – a couple of weeks ago, and I was really impressed at how a lot of these programs, the youth programs, have really taken the same colors, a lot of the same mascots for the most part, and really run that all the way down into their youth programs. Um, you know, for instance, uh, the Husky uh, teams, you know, they had the same colors. Camden had the same colors, and they were the Bears. You know, Edenton had the same colors. Um, and then you look at all the coaches on the sideline for Edenton, and they're all wearing Edenton, what, what I know to be Edenton High School apparel. But they fit the color schemes, they fit all that stuff. These kids see that, you know, and that's building a program. And that's something that I, I'm, I've always been impressed with at Edenton. And they've got tradition. There is no doubt they have tradition. And I love it. I love to see it. And, and hopefully it continues, and it's something that I hope every program can build on. But that's so vital. And so, again, I, I'd love to be standing on, you know, what is that, Main Street right there in Edenton, you know, watching that parade go by at 12 noon. I mean, that place is just – everybody's going to be closed. Every store is closed. Everybody's going to be on the street side waving those kids on. That, that's what it's all about. So congratulations to those guys. You deserve it, but keep it rolling. Let's get this to uh, other high school updates. Uh, basketball, Brooklyn's boys basketball coach Tommy Johnson got his 500th career win after a 71-61 win against Ocracoke on Tuesday night. Pirates are going to be at home Friday against Mad Mesquite. They'll do a, a short ceremony for Coach Johnson on his 500th win. Uh, most of his time, obviously, in Western North Carolina, just his second year at Brooklyn's, but shows that he's been in the game a while. Yes. Uh, so 500 wins for him. and. Camden boys coach Mark Harnley. He's right near 400, I believe. Okay. And we all know Coach Harnley, what he's been able to do with Camden boys basketball for more than 15 years uh, now. And Camden beating Curry Tuck on Wednesday night. Uh, Curry Tuck girls beating Camden's girls also on Wednesday night. Uh, Northeastern's Nyla Harris in the 500. Darius Walton in the high jump. Trey Bryant, excuse me, Darius Walton in the long jump. Trey Bryant in the high jump. They were a few of the state qualifiers uh, for the Eagles in indoor track after a meet at Norfolk Academy on Tuesday. Wrestling a try meet at Northeastern on Tuesday with the Eagles, Pasqua Tank, and First Flight. Panthers go 2 and 0. Uh, First Flight 1 and 1, Northeastern 0 and 2. Uh, Javion Bass Knight and Anthony Bonner uh, for Coach Jonathan Sutton and company. The Pasqua Tank wrestling's got a nice. Mm-hmm. Got a nice vibe going on right now. A lot of wrestlers out there, and Pasqual Tank wrestling in the past has had some success. So it's great to see the numbers back at Pasqual Tank and them doing some big things. Football again. A sports Sawyer named the new Manio football coach, replacing the retiring Eddie Twine. Sawyer was at Washington for 12 seasons, went 94 and 70, most notably reaching the two AA state title game in 2014, uh, beat Northeastern in the East final to do so. Big hire, I think, for the Redskins coach. You agree? Huge hire. Sports Story is one of the most well-respected coaches in, in the entire state, not just within this region. He's a great guy to talk to. He's knowledgeable. He's very personable. And uh, an incredible hire by Manio. And 
I wish him the best, and we'll see him in week one. Uh, to the colleges now, uh, ECSU men lost at Barton on Tuesday. A team opened CIAA play this following Tuesday alongside the women at home against Shaw. Uh, Mackey men took their first United States Collegiate Athletic Association defeat on Saturday and a setback to Warren Wilson. Mackey women, however, ranked 15th in the top 20 poll of USCAA Division II teams. First ranking ever for the Lady Mustangs. They're 4-0 in the association, 5-4 and overall. They're going to play at NCAA Division Three Greensboro on Friday. Of course, Aliyah McNeil, former Area Player of the Year from Northeastern, doing big things already uh, with Mac. You uh, think she's fifth in the USCAA in scoring wow. average wow. freshman? Again, just it's been a great fit for her. And definitely, Mac. You uh, loves having her, and it's that local contact. That mm-hmm. I think the Mustangs also yearn for, and they they're getting it with with her. Uh, had some Curry Tuck alums do some big things at the college level last weekend. Amanda Gurney, 30 points off 10 three-pointers from Virginia Wesleyan on Saturday. Then the next day, Jeff Dover ran a 415 mile for Christopher Newport in the team's indoor track opener. He now holds, holds the nation's best mile and 3K times for all Division III. He'll be the first to say, Owen, oh, it's very early. I just don't. That's who he is. He's very low-key. He doesn't. He's just. That's how he's a great kid. He's just a great kid. He says, hey, there's a lot more meets to come and a lot of these. It's it, it, okay. If you want to write about it, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's how he is. Daquan Foreman, of course, who can, we can't forget that kid with uh, some of the fastest wheels this area's ever seen. Part of the Shepherd football team that reached the national semifinals of the Division II playoffs. West Virginia School trying for back to back national championship appearances. Have you talked to uh, Mr. Foreman, coach? Uh, we text back and forth, and he's he's pretty excited. He's also a real humble kid. He's very similar to uh, to Jeff Dover. They're just real humble. They're they're happy to be where they're at. And matter of fact, uh, you know, Daquan uh, tweeted me back. He said hashtag repping the two five two. So he's uh, he's all about repping Northeastern North Carolina, and he's doing big things up there in West Virginia. Proud of that kid. Okay. Well, I guess we can close up for this episode. Uh, definitely a lot to cover. Remember to follow us on Twitter at NENC Sports. I'm an ONOBX, Malcolm. I'm at Malcolm underscore Shields. A coach. Oh, I, I couldn't hear you over the piano. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, at Curry Tech SB. <laughs> That's for the latest sports updates, as well as pick up a copy of the Daily Advance newspaper. We almost always go beyond our radio time, so go to YouTube and search for either WRVS 899 or NENC Sports if you're not listening to us already on YouTube. Uh, for Owen Hassel, Malcolm Shields, uh, buddy, thanks for being on the show, uh, John Wheeler. Uh, anytime, you're always welcome to be on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. Appreciate you having me on. With the NENC, and don't you see, athletes, athletes live here. NENC Sports Radio Show is produced at the WRVS-FM studios on the campus of Elizabeth City State University.